So in this video, I want to talk about implication, logical implication. So logical implication is um, when we talk about P implying Q to mean that P causes Q. And often the way that we approach it is simply to uh, define its truth table. And that's what we do in propositional logic, right? So we typically define this by just writing out the truth table for it. Um, so P and Q and one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, P implies Q. And we usually, so, so what does it mean for P to cause Q? So we see that P has happened and Q has happened. So we want to say that P has caused Q there. We see that P has happened and Q has not happened, or P is true and Q is false. And certainly in that instance, we don't want that to be true. Now I'm gonna look at the last line here before getting to the third line. So we have P zero and Q zero. So P has not happened and Q has not happened. And in some sense, that is again, a sense of causing, um, P causing Q. So it, I think I can argue there without too much controversy that we can put a one there. But as it's done, when we define P implies Q, we also put a one when P has, when P is false, but Q is true. And this is of course the row that causes controversy, right? So the, the, the difficult thing is to justify this. And actually, um, Naturally, this this video I decided to create this video because recently I taught this in a in a first year undergraduate um, course and uh, a very engaged student, you know, really wanted to kind of understand why this was true and I try to provide some conceptual arguments, but it was still touch and go. It was it was difficult to really um, to 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 give a good conceptual reason as to why this should be true. Of course, there are conceptual reasons, but it's nicer when you have something like this to really get it out of the wash, to get it out of something as a consequence. So I decided to somehow think about doing this in a slightly different way, okay? And that's what I'm gonna talk about here. So, so what is that slightly different way? So um, let, me, let me now, let's, let's say that we haven't defined implication. What we want to do is to get that truth table for implication out of something more conceptual. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna forget that we know what implication is, and instead we're gonna work up to it by something a little bit more basic. So the first thing I want to say, and this is something I'm gonna assume familiarity with, I'm gonna assume familiarity with. negation, conjunction, and disjunction, okay? So I, I hope that you're familiar with these three logical operations. Um, and they are, of course, defined by, so these are defined by truth tables. So again, there is no requirement here to use implication anyway, right? So that should be obvious. Now I'm going to do something a little bit strange. I'm going to define logical equivalence without resorting to, to implication, right? Often logical um, implication is uh, defined through, uh, logical equivalence is defined through implication, but we're going to avoid that. So I want to say P is logically equivalent to Q. So that means that P and Q should take the same val truth values always, right? So this is going to be, this as a logical operation is going to be true only when, uh, all, the only instance it's going to be, it's going to be true is when both P and Q take the same truth value. So, so we can, so again, that's more conceptual. So we can define this. Um, so define this by, so I'm going to just draw out a truth table here to define it. So P and Q and P is equivalent to Q. So really think about it as equivalence, right? Um, and one, one, zero, zero, again, we have one, zero, one, zero. 
So obviously when P and Q are both 1, we want this to be 1. When P and Q are both 0, again, they take the same truth value, so we want this to be 1. But in the other situation here, they take different truth values, so we should set that to be 0. Okay, so that's, that's how we can just define um, logical equivalence uh, just via truth table. Now, with this, we can immediately prove a theorem. Okay, so, so now that we have logical equivalence, what it means for two, so from logical equivalence, what it means for two propositions to be logically equivalent is if they have the same truth tables. So, so via that, we can prove the following. We, we can obtain uh, De Morgan's laws. Okay, so what do De Morgan's laws say? So we have that the negation of P and Q uh, is equivalent to the negation of P or the negation of Q. That's the first law. And of course, we have the second law where the negation of P or Q is logically equivalent to the negation of P and the negation of Q. Okay, so again, I want to emphasize that this does not require us to um, have implication in the proof of this, because what is the proof? So I won't, I won't write out the proof, but I'll just say it so we, it just suffices to show that the left hand side, um, the, the truth table, the, the truth table, for the left hand side is identical to the truth table for the right hand side. Okay, so that's all we have to do to prove that. So of course, I'm not going to prove it. But I hope that up to now, you're satisfied that in one, two and three, we have not used logical uh, we, we, we haven't resorted to ever requiring implication. All we've done is just truth tables. Great. Okay, now let's get to the heart of the matter. Now we want to obtain logic, uh, a definition for logical, um, uh, for, for implication, um, and, and actually have the truth table that we saw at the start really emerging from the definition. So let's think about what, again, remind ourselves what P implies Q means. So P implies Q is really conceptually, it means that P causes Q. But instead of thinking about what it means for P to cause Q, let's think about what it would mean to take the negation of this, i.e. let's think about when P causes Q is false, right? That's not the same thing as P does. I don't want to say that that's, you know, saying that P doesn't cause Q. We're saying not P causes Q, okay? So I want to think about when P causes Q is false, and that should really be when we have, so this should happen, so this uh, should happen, so I'll write this in words, maybe, maybe in the next line, should happen um, when we encounter P and we also encounter not Q, okay? So P causes Q should be false when we see P and we see not Q being true. So, so that sort of is strange, but that's really, I mean, it's not strange, it's, it's, it's conceptual and it's intuitive, but what we're going to do is strange. What we're going to do is to define P implies Q by defining its negation, okay? And that's fine because you can think about it as, an, as something like an equation. I mean, you can write down an equation like 
you know, 2x equals 5 and you're solving for x, in the same way, in some sense here, we're solving for implication. So I'm going to write down a definition that involves implication, but really we're going to define the negation. And logically, it doesn't really matter whether we define the negation of something or itself, because we, again, have the interaction between negation and logical equivalence. And that is at the level of truth table. So we don't require implication in any of that, right? So again, it's important to make sure that we, we don't have any circularity in our, in our um, deductions. So let me now make a definition. Okay, so, so the idea here is to define not P implies Q. And so why is that okay? Because P implies Q is logically equivalent, and we have equivalence from before, not not P implies Q. So if you define this, then we get this, right? Just by taking a not. That's the, that's the basic idea. So let me make this definition. We define, uh, define P implies Q by not P implies Q being the same as P and not Q, or logically the same as P and not Q. So again, why is this? Because we said that P causes Q to be false should happen when P and Q, or it should be logically equivalent, that's what should, happens, should happen here means, to P and not Q. And P causes Q false means that not P causes Q is true, right? And that's exactly what we have here. And I should maybe write definition here, right? So this is, by definition, we are setting P implies Q through this logical equivalence. So now we said that actually this is equivalent to this, so we can unravel this. So let's unravel this statement, right? So if we unravel this statement, so let's write P implies Q, logically equivalent to not, not, P implies Q. And now we have the definition here. So we're just negating this definition. So, or the thing that it's logically equivalent to. And now we can appeal to De Morgan's laws, right? So let's have a look at the De Morgan's laws when we have an and. So not P and Q is the same thing as not P or not Q. So how does this help us? So this helps us because this is now going to be not P and not not Q. And that's, of course, logically equivalent to not P. Uh, sorry, this is a or. Not P or not not Q, right? That's, that's De Morgan's law. Um, and so this is now going to be simply Q, logically equivalent to Q. So we've unraveled, so we've started from something conceptual, we've defined the negation, and we've unraveled to find out exactly what we want to get to. Now, how does this help us? Okay, so now let's, let's have a look at, so we're saying that this and this are equivalent, so the truth table of this is equivalent to the truth table of this. So it suffices for us to look at the truth table of this. So let's have a look. So P, Q again. I'm going to draw it very, very long. Because in this slot, I want to just remind ourselves. In this slot, I want to remind ourselves that not P or Q is we've just calculated this to be equivalent to P implies Q. Okay, so we're going to we're going to write out the truth table of this here. So, okay, maybe I should have actually I should have um, left a little bit of room here maybe for not P just to be very, very 
careful in our calculation. So this is 0, 0, 1, 1. Now we are going to look at not P or Q. So let's have a look, not P or Q. So we get a 1 here. We get a 0 there, 1, 1. So we get a 1 here and we also get a 1 here. Now we arrive at the truth table of P implies Q. Having the 1 here, Okay, before I found it hard to conceptually justify it, but here we can actually arrive at the one being there. And we arrive at the one being there by a more conceptual consideration, by considering the negation of it and understanding when the negation of P causes Q to be true or P causes Q to be false, right? So the negation is true. That should happen when P and not Q, when we encounter P and not Q, so through defining it in this way, we actually arrive at the um, truth table of P implies Q. And then actually logical equivalence. So it is now a theorem that I'll let you verify that P and Q are logically equivalent. Um, so this would often be the definition Okay, so of course, in some sense, we're using, so, so we have logical equivalence here and equivalence here, but, but, um, but one can verify this, right? If you write out P implies Q and Q implies P in a truth table, and then you take the and, you will end up seeing that that's the same as the truth table of P um, logically equivalent to Q. So this now allows us to justify saying if and only if. So I've avoided saying if and only if, I hope, um, throughout this video. And the reason for that, and the reason I've called this constantly logical equivalence is because that's what we wanted to arrive at. And so at least now, I hope that you can be comfortable with why we have a one in here. Um, and we've done it, we've, 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 we've arrived at something maybe that was that, that I call the row of controversy as really a conclusion from something more conceptual, right? And then when we logically calculate everything out, we arrive at the one there. Thank you very much.